Hello and welcome to this video on a common medication for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder or ADHD. It's a condition treated with Ritalin or Adderall and this is often compared to cocaine and in many ways wrongly so. ADHD is a condition that affects mostly young children with regards to their behaviour and learning. The children often have difficulty concentrating, become easily distracted, are impulsive and overactive. For the most part, and in most cases, this is not an issue to do with parenting or the way the child's behaving, rather they do have a neurological problem. The primary symptoms that need to be dealt with are inattention, impulsivity and overactivity. To a certain extent, by targeting the overactivity, you can hopefully make them more focused, therefore solving inattention and removing the impulsivity of the behaviours. One of the most common ways to do this now and somewhat controversially, is with medication. This primarily mitigates the effects of the neuropathology that underlies ADHD, thereby, to a certain extent, making the children more normal and manageable. In this case, it's a stimulant, and that's a general classification of drugs that promote neural activity, and it often goes by the name Adderall, although you may also see it sold as Ritalin, and under certain generic names. For the purposes of this video, we'll focus purely on Adderall though. It is a prescription medication given for ADHD, and it's also given for some other conditions such as narcolepsy. Cocaine is often compared with this as it is an illicit medication, whereas Adderall is a prescription medication. Where cocaine is illicit and unregulated, Adderall is very highly regulated, and there are certain restrictions about how it's used. The two are similar in some ways, but they're also markedly different in others. For that reason, we're going to approach it by breaking down Adderall first, and then cocaine. Adderall is interesting, and the first thing that may surprise you is to learn that it's not just one drug. Rather, it's two different drugs in a particular format. They have two versions of each drug, basically mirrors of each other these being amphetamine and dextroamphetamine. They are very similar in some ways to methamphetamine, but they are different, and that's an important note. The difference between amphetamine in this context and methamphetamine has to do with how it's structured. The clarity of this video will further separate out Adderall into its two constituent drugs, but keep in mind Adderall has both present, and when we are describing only one part, the other is also present and may be working synergistically. Dextroamphetamine is a synthetic substance created in a laboratory, but it does have similarities to the naturally occurring sympathomimetic amines. These are generally under the umbrella of amphetamines. They all target the central nervous system, primarily the brain in this case. When they find their way to a receptor on a neuron, they cause the release of dopamine. This in turn helps to initiate the reward system, resulting in a state of euphoria. This then alters behaviour to be more positive. When they're consumed, they're normally taken as a pill, and reason for this is that they can be absorbed from the GI tract. Because of that, there's also the ability to get them as a slow or short-acting drug, anywhere between 4 and 24 hours of activity. They get spread right throughout the body, but their only real activity that we're aware of at this stage is in the central nervous system. Amphetamines are quite an old drug by now. They're over 100 years ago, and we have a video on their role as the Wehrmacht's wonder drug. Initially, they were given out for anything and everything, but they've gradually become more restricted. And that's because of how they act in the brain itself. Other than activating that dopamine system for a reward, they have a lot of other effects, and one of the big ones is going to be how they augment the activity of noradrenaline in the prefrontal cortex, and the dopamine release in the striatum. This then leads to a lot of increases in the way the neurons are firing in the brain. This then sends signals to other parts of the body, notably the cardiovascular system, and that's why high doses of amphetamines can cause heart attack. It's also been found in some older literature, although less reliably now, that the use of it can lead to better cognitive performance. This is one of the reasons why it's used partly for kids with ADHD, but also because of how it then has an effect on the neurons themselves. 
and we'll explain exactly how giving them a stimulant, which makes their neurons fire more frequently and are more active, then help to make them more sedate and relaxed. Part of what the amphetamines do is that it both promotes activity and decreases other activity in the brain, and this is done through the TAR1 receptor. The TAR1 receptor is the trace amine associated receptor. The amphetamines have a high binding affinity for this, but not for the monoamine autoreceptors which are meant to counter the TAR1 activity. This means that when you get the effect of amphetamines, they basically increase the activity that's in the part of the brain responsible not only so far for rewards, but also for the parts of the brain that are responsible for stress responses. This then means that you're decreasing stress activity in the brain while increasing the positive response in the brain. Further to that, it activates certain genes being expressed, mostly those resulting in the reduction in monoamine and trace amine metabolism. That means you get more monoamines sitting in the synaptic gap, and therefore they can activate other neurons more readily and sooner. Normally neurotransmitters, whether they're dopamine or otherwise, would either diffuse away from that gap, bind to their receptor and get taken into the new neuron, or be reuptaken by the old neuron. Where this doesn't happen, enzymes will go through and destroy the neurotransmitter. Because of that, you'll find that by having them sitting in that gap for longer, they have more opportunity to bind to their appropriate receptor. This then leads to a increase in cellular communication. Because you don't have these neurotransmitters being recycled and reused as often, you get both more neuroactivity, because they're there to do their job for longer, but you also don't have the opportunity to recycle them, and therefore you get reduction in neuron activity. The neurons become exhausted, both physiologically, but also through exhaustion of their reserves of neurotransmitters that take time to restock by being expressed, translated, and then remade inside the neuron, because they're not able to get back the ones they put out. This means over time, you'll see that the agitation and other nervous behavior that are part of ADHD go down as the brain has less ability to communicate effectively. Therefore, you get a more focused and controlled release and action. By contrast to this, we have cocaine. And cocaine is much, much more broad in what it does, but also it's much shorter acting. It's a tropane alkaloid, which also targets the central nervous system. Cocaine will bind to the transport proteins involved in the reuptake of dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine, just like the way that Adderall acts by allowing more opportunity for the dopamine to sit in the synaptic cleft and therefore bind to its receptors. Cocaine does the same thing, but with more neurotransmitters. This means that they build up inside that synaptic cleft and you get more receptor activation on the neuron that's being signaled to. This then leads to a more rapid state of mind. The neurons are firing more frequently and the signals being sent more often. The reason this happens and part of it is largely down to the secondary effect of it is that it can block the voltage-gated sodium channels in the cell membrane. By doing so, it allows for the easier initiation of nerve impulses, and therefore you don't get a sense at all. Cocaine can cause a lack of sensation. This is more notable in the periphery of the body rather than the central nervous system. So in the brain and spinal cord, you see you get more activity, whereas in the periphery of the body you see less activity. Both Adderall and cocaine are stimulants when we talk about their role in the central nervous system. They will make you more alert, they will increase feelings of euphoria and well-being, and both of them are restricted. Admittedly, one is illicit all the time, whereas one is only illicit if you do not have an appropriate prescription. We've spoken briefly about how long the effects last. And this is one of the bigger differences. Because cocaine has a very short action time, it really is somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes at the high end. 
That short high means that it has a lot of punch for its weight. It acts very quickly and very strongly, and then it's gone. Comparatively, Adderall provides a longer, steadier level of stimulation. This means it takes longer to begin, it has a wider plateau, and it tapers off somewhat more slowly. The shorter acting variants last between 4 and 6 hours, and extended release formulations up to 12 hours. This ensures that those neurons have that initial increase in activity, and then they become exhausted. And therefore, you get a maintained state of sedation for those with ADHD, allowing them to be able to concentrate better. Adderall and cocaine are stimulants, but one, cocaine, is very quick acting with some of the same results. The other, Adderall, is slower acting and provides a longer term effect. This helps to maintain a more level but subdued state of mind. It's why Adderall and cocaine are similar in that they're both stimulants, and to a certain extent they both rely heavily on the dopamine action. They are not the same, nor comparable in most ways. You can draw some comparisons, but certainly, once you get into the detail of what they do internally, they do something very different. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting, consider liking, sharing, and subscribing. Please post any comments, questions, or suggestions you have below.